Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Cocktails and Rocktails with me, Notorious Groupie, Allison Rouse, author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. For those of you who don't know, and for those of you who don't know where to get it, everything's down in the description, along with these books as well. These are also my books. How to Be a Groupie 101, because everybody needs to know if you want to go down that road. It's everything you need to know, along with How to Flirt with a Rockstar and the Groupies Guide to Etiquette on the Road. So check them out. All right, guys, and always, I like to start with the love and being thankful for everybody. And I truly, truly am because you guys just stand by me so amazingly. And all of you new people coming in, you're just so awesome that you've created a, an amazing community. And I can never thank you guys enough, truly. Like, just thank you doesn't do it. And we're almost to a thousand. So you guys, let's get there because I have some really awesome shit that's going to go down. Just like me in the 80s. Awesome, it went down. All right. Oh, sorry, I burped a little. Okay, it's all done. All right, anyway, so today we are going to cover a topic that somebody asked me down in comments to one of my previous videos about the attitude and acceptance of different people into the metal community, specifically the LGBTQ community. This is not going to be a subject for everybody, so you don't have to watch it, but don't ridicule either. Because I am very welcoming to all kinds of souls, because that's what we are. We're all, the, we're all different souls bouncing around, just trying to get things right. Most of us are. So, and in this, in honor of that, I tried to do a rainbow shot. Oh my God, it looks better than I thought it did on the camera. Oh yeah. So it's might gonna be gross because it's like grenadine, blue carousel, um, melon liqueur, some triple sec, and some pink vodka. So everybody, taste the rainbow. Kick up your heels and let's have a little cocktails rock tail, shall we? Cheers, big ears. All right. Oh yeah, super sweet, but I'd still rather swallow this than Kip Winger any day. Ooh, it's getting bright out there. Okay. Okay, so like I said, this was based on a question that someone asked me how they are a trans woman wanting to get into, and I'm not going to name names. I don't want anybody searching the comments. I don't want anybody giving anybody crap here because that's not where, what we're about. Everybody here has been incredibly welcoming and kind and wonderful, and I'd like to keep it that way, and I appreciate everybody who is, and all you guys just being so fucking open and honest and accepting. That's what we're about here, and that's what rock and roll is actually about, because people forget, and I'm going to tell you a specific story about this, a couple of them. People don't realize how many... Uh, gay people there are in the music business. Joan Jett is bisexual. That's been publicly known because of the Runaways movie and stuff. Um, God, why am I not even thinking of everybody that I can think of? But I'm going to go with the big metal god, Rob Halford. I mean, I knew in the 80s he was gay. I was backstage with Testament and Judas Priest, and I was kind of on a hunt because I was already with Chuck Billy, but I was like, I might as well go make a little contact with Glenn Tipton. Get him for next time he comes in town, leave a little aura behind, whatever. So I'm wandering around backstage, and I go in, I see Judas Priest's dressing room, and I walk in, and there was Rob Halford making out with a local guitarist, Jim, who I had a crush on. And I was like, whoa. And it wasn't because he was gay. It was because, God damn it, I had a crush on Jim, and now I knew I was never going to get him because I was so not his type. Bummer. But... The story that I really want to tell that really will kind of make you understand this was a huge tour out on OzFest. And this was not long after John died. I want to say the, the Osbournes were being filmed. So like that whole crew was out on OzFest with them. Um, because in rock and roll, like I always say, rock and roll is very, very different. They don't judge people the way regular society judges people. And this is one of the things I've always loved about rock and roll, that it is so welcoming and non-judgmental and respectful and defending. There goes my kitty. He said, <laughs> Beluga, Beluga wants to get in on filming. We'll get him in one day. He's so happy. But anyway, so 
it's it's a better world that never judged me for my antics that knew about Rob Halford long 20 years before the rest of the world did, which when he came out, it was such a huge thing for metal because it really tested the, not the tolerance, because that's not the right word, the acceptance of rock and roll. So years and years later, after he comes out, and this is after, like I said, 2002, when I first met Glenn, when I had left to Las Vegas. So I want to say it's around 2003, 2004. I was in Salt Lake City. I was bored as fuck, wanted to get out of town. So was talking to, you know, Glenn and Walt and other people from the tour and was like, they're like, well, want to come down to Albuquerque just to hang out. I wasn't sleeping with anybody and didn't intend to, but I just wanted to get the fuck out of Salt Lake and be with my tribe. So they were in, in Albuquerque for like two or three days before the show. They had the show and they had another day off after the show that everybody left the day after the show. And we had a plan to go golfing because you guys do not realize how many people are golfers. But it was windy as fuck, windy as fuck. So we're all down in the hotel bar and we're kind of bored. There's this other bar, restaurant kind of thing across the way. We need to get out of the hotel. Like I said, we couldn't go golfing because the first day because it was so fucking windy. Like try and hit the ball and it just comes back. We just ended up like, because we tried to go. But anyway, this is a whole other story. So anyway, we tried to go golfing and ended up just, going out across the street to this little bar and somebody had a mushroom cookie. I remember this much. <laughs> I had a little bite, just a little, little one, just enough to be like, whoa. And you know, those bar machines where you play the games, I'm just playing this fucking game on my cookies. And I'm the only girl out here besides Chelsea, who was big Val, which was, um, Pantera Vinny's former first, uh, security guard, Big Val. So he was out there with his wife, Chelsea, and that was the only other woman besides Sharon Osbourne on the tour. Like, I remember those guys checking in the hotel. I see Walt. I see their tour. I see everybody, and I just go running and jump into the, everybody's arms because I was so happy to see my friends. So anyway, as we're sitting across the way, Chelsea and Val are not there, you know, and people are feeling a little restless in their pants. And we look over and there are these two girls, pretty girls. One's, one's really pretty, kind of more in the next, next door girl kind of way, but her friend was so beautiful. This long, dark hair, beautiful, exotic eyes, just on point, tiny little petite thing. Tiny little petite thing. Just gorgeous. And they're like, you should go over and talk to these girls, get them over, you know, come and introduce us to them, blah, 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 blah. And you could tell that they were looking at everybody. And yeah, there was, you know, Glenn and a bunch of the crew guys and stuff like that. Just a couple of the other band guys, just everybody hanging out there being bored. Cause like I said, we couldn't do much with the wind. So I go over and I start talking to them. Really, really nice girls. Cool as fuck. The what, the blonder girl, um, less exotic girl. She was kind of more star fuckery, like, yeah, she just, but the exotic girl, she was just cool as fuck and she was really kind of shy. But, you know, she had her moments where she would get out and laugh and join the conversation and she would kind of retreat for a while. So after a couple hours, we'd eaten and we're like, you know what? Somebody was wanting some cocaine and the blonder girl could get it for them. So we we're like, all right, make your phone call. Let's go across the street. We're going to hit the buses because we do that a lot. We hit the buses before going up to the hotel room. So we have a place to party that's not our private hotel room. So we hit the buses. And before we go over, the more exotic girl, and I, and I want to call her, say her name was Jasmine. I'd have to look in my old phone books because I kept in touch with her for years. And we just sort of lost contact after a while. But I want to call her Jasmine. I suck with names. And anyway, she was really, really scared to go over. She was kind of, I'm like, what's the matter? What's the matter? And she was like, I'm just so afraid to go over there. She, and she pulled me into the bathroom. She's like, I just want to talk to you alone. She's like, I just have to tell you a secret. She's like, I'm trans. Pre-op, trans. And I said, and? She's like, I'm like, I'm sure a couple of the guys could tell. I said, I couldn't tell. I said, God damn girl, you are fucking beautiful. Like, holy shit. You know, and 
because why do some trans men just, they're so much more beautiful than women, <laughs> you know? Well, they are women. They, they just become these amazingly gorgeous women. So anyway, I was like, what are you worried about? She's like, I'm so afraid that these guys are going to kick my ass, that they're going to beat me down like this is a trap or something. I stepped back and said, honey, I said, do you know about Judas Priest? She's like, no. I said, their lead singer, Rob, is gay. He's been out of the closet for many, many years now, for a decade now, but we've all known since the 80s. And she's like, what? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, this is, no, this has nothing to do. They just enjoy your company and want to keep the party going. Your friend's going to get some Coke. And it's just normal hospitality to come over, hang out, have a few beers on the bus. Wait, you know, this is how it goes. And she was like, Really? And I was like, yeah. And she was still kind of scared, but I just took her by the hand. I'm like, sweetie, you're going to be okay. I'm like, nobody's judging you on that. Nobody's looking at you like that. They're just looking at you as this beautiful woman because you are a beautiful woman. So she came over. She sat really quiet, hung out with me. A couple of the guys were like, hell yeah, they didn't even care. It's not like David Lee Roth said it the best. A hole is a hole is a hole, but a soul is a soul. And that soul does not care what your package is wrapped up in. Whether it's for friendship, for sex, drugs, and rock and roll, for long-term relationships, for marriage, for whatever. A soul is a soul. And it was really great to bring Jasmine over that night and she kind of dropped her barriers. I could see her drop her barriers as we got more, as she got more comfortable and realized she was just another beautiful woman sitting on a tour bus that nothing else, nobody else saw her as anything else. And that was a good thing. That was a great thing because that's who she is. She was just another beautiful woman. So there you go. If that helps you answer and for people who have any doubt, just remember you don't judge Rob Halford. Don't judge anybody else. Don't be the double standard because rock and roll is actually quite accepting. You, there may be a few twisted idiots in rock and roll. And I don't know, I'm not naming names. I'm not pointing out anybody particular, but there's going to be those ones that you may not be so comfortable around, but for 95% of the percent of it, very, very accepting. You think Kirk Hammett's going to judge you? Fuck no. Quirk is called Quirk for a reason. You know, he's very mahalo. You think the guys in Judas Priest? No. You think the guys, the only one in Pantera that I would be worried about would be Rex King. Not Rex King. Oh, sorry. Fuck no. Not Rex King. Rex King is a badass guy. He's cool as hell. He's a tour manager. You guys might have heard his name in the movie Almost Famous. Um, but Rex uh, Brown from Pantera. But it's, it's very, very few. Like I said, rock and roll is accepting. And that's really, truly one of the things that I've always loved about it. Because I felt comfortable, safe, and accepted. And everybody else can too in rock and roll. So I want you to know that. And don't be afraid to be true to who you are. And handle things the way you normally do. Because they're just guys. And you want to be part of the music? Go be part of the music system music world find your tribe because i know that's what you're looking for and it has nothing to do with the outer you are becoming the most beautiful person that you were meant to be and that's amazing and i love it and i'm very excited for anybody who is on that journey because it takes a lot and just as much as it took for rob halford to come out of that closet and back then not one single metalhead not one single band nobody came out against him. So there you guys go. There's my talk of the day, a little more serious than a lot of people. Um, if you want to leave comments, please, please, please. No hate, no love. If you have something, if you don't like it, just ignore it. Okay. If it's, you don't understand it or are confused, ask respectful questions. And you'll get respectful answers. And you might see this amazing soul that was very brave to ask this question. So do unto others as you would have done to yourself, all right? Because rock and roll does. Like I say, it is my safe space. And it's a safe space for a lot of people. Of all walks of life. 
All right, guys. Well, again, thank you so much for listening to me today. And as always, I just, I, I just love everybody being so loving and open and honest and true to themselves here. And that's what it's about. This is your place to do that. So everybody do that. And if you like it and you want to spread the love, hit that share button. Hit the subscribe button. For those of you that are just haunting the channel, the 50% that are watching my videos and not subscribed, subscribe because when I hit a 1,000, I'm going to be doing giveaways of all kinds of cool stuff, all right? So hit that subscribe, hit the share, hit the bells, and I'll see you next time on Cocktails and Rocktails. Oh, cheers, big ears.